In today's episode of Gen 2 Made Easy, we're going to take a look at how to mine Monero. Now, of course, the steps that I'm going to show you here are going to more or less apply to any Linux distro that you're going to be using. The package names for dependencies might be slightly different if you're using a package manager other than Portage, but just look up the package names on DuckDuckGo for your respective distro to get the exact strings. Now, Monero works a little bit differently than other cryptocurrencies. The random X algorithm, which is used to mine Monero, is actually optimized to run on CPUs instead of graphics cards or ASICs. And because of this, it's actually a really easy coin for you to get into mining because you don't have to worry about going out and buying a bunch of overpriced GPUs and you can mine Monero on a much wider range of devices that don't even have dedicated graphics to begin with. So to start, you're going to want to make sure that you have all of the dependencies for the mining software that we're going to use, uh, which in this case is XMR Stack. And I recommend using this mining software because it's open source, it has no default mining fee, and it typically has the best hash rate compared to other mining software. But of course, this can vary depending on your hardware and its configurations uh, or updates that might get made to different mining softwares. So of course, the best mining software is really the one that gives you the best hash rate on your hardware. Uh, but this is just the one that we'll be using for this video. So for your dependencies, you're going to want to make sure you have CMake if you decide to compile from source and you'll also need hwlock, openssl, and micro httpd uh, as dependencies for the binary or to compile from source. Chances are you have these installed already, but if you don't, just go ahead and install them. So once you've got that, go ahead and head over to FireIce UK's GitHub uh, to download XMR stack. You can go ahead and grab it from the releases page over here, which is going to bring you to this page. And of course, links will be in the description for all of this stuff. So you can grab this, which is the pre-compiled binary for Linux, or you can grab the source code and then build it from source yourself. Uh, or if you're on Windows and you want to mine some Monero for Microsoft, there are pre-compiled Windows binaries available as well. Now, to actually mine Monero and get any real chance of actually getting paid, you're going to want to join a mining pool. And this is pretty much the same case for any cryptocurrency. Uh, so you can see active Monero pools on poolwatch.io. This is going to list the major ones. Uh, there's other sites that list smaller XMR pools. If you just you know search up XMR pools or Monero mining pools, you can find a much larger list of them. Uh, but here you can see the different hash rates that these different pools have and what percentage of their hash rate makes up the entire network. Now, what's important to understand about a pool is that you have thousands of other miners that are combining their resources to increase the probability of finding the next block to mine. So the bigger that that pool is, and the more resources that are combined into that pool, the more likely that pool will be to actually receive a block reward, which is currently 1.26 XMR every two minutes. And if your pool happens to mine a block, it's going to be distributed to all of the miners in that pool based off of how much each of them contributed to mining. Uh, and of course, you have to have been in that pool uh, before that block was discovered. So if you know, you're not going to be able to join a pool now and then get any rewards from a block that was mined five minutes ago. So when you're choosing a pool to join, Remember that if you join a bigger pool, there's going to be a higher chance of getting a reward, like actually getting anything, but your share of that reward is going to be much, much smaller. Like if we look at this one, they've got almost 30,000 miners. So every time that they get that 1.26 XMR, it has to be divvied up between all of them. Uh, and it's not divvied up evenly either. It's based off of how many shares uh, that you're actually sending into the network for trying to mine the block. 
And then of course with a smaller pool, you're going to get less frequently rewarded, but the rewards that you'll actually get are going to be much larger. Uh, and now this is really important since this is a cryptocurrency. We actually want to avoid any one pool gaining a majority of the network hash rate because if a pool, if a single pool were to get 51% or more of the hash rate, then there's a chance that some fuckery could start to occur like double spending. Um, you know, if a single pool has more than half of the network share, they can decide what transactions are accepted or rejected by the network. Uh, the double spending is when they say that they send some Monero to one address and then, you know, they can have over half of the network confirm it because they make up over half of the network. Uh, so this is really something that you want to avoid. And they even give a little warning here on Pool Watch whenever a single pool goes above 30% of the total hash rate, uh, they'll tell you not to join it. So you shouldn't join mine XMR. Uh, you probably shouldn't join support XMR either because these two combined actually make up over 50%. You should probably join something like nano pool or you know, one of these other ones uh, that has a much smaller collected hash rate. And then the last really important thing to consider when you're deciding what pool to join is the reward method, whether you want to go with PPLNS or PPS. So a quick summary of the difference, PPS is going to pay you for your share of the computation, regardless of whether or not the pool ends up finding a block. So you're always going to get paid with PPS, but the payment is calculated based off of the probability of a certain number of shares needed for a pool to find a block. Uh, so the people who are running the pool, they're obviously going to adjust that reward to avoid the pool getting drained because they don't want to, you know, it doesn't make sense for them to be paying the miners for more blocks than they are actually mining, like the people operating the pool would lose money if they do that. Um, but this is the method that I would recommend using if you are not going to be mining super consistently or if you have an unstable internet connection. And if your internet is stable and you're going to stay in the same mining pool for a long time, like say if you have a dedicated rig that all it's going to be doing is mining Monero, then you should stick with PPLNS. Uh, which is going to pay based on shares found over a given period of time. So, you know, again, if you plan to mine this currency in the same pool for a while, say days at a time, you should go with this because you're actually going to end up getting paid a little bit more. And I also recommend just doing a lot of research on the pool that you're going to be in if you plan to stay there a long time, since it's going to be more of a commitment. Uh, now, once you've got all of that figured out, you can head over to your terminal um, and go to the directory where you unzipped uh, XMR stack. So you're going to just get this binary in there by default. And when you first run XMR stack, there's gonna be a little bit of configuration you have to do. Uh, this is what it looks like while it's running, by the way, if you were curious. Um, so yeah, a little bit of configuration. You have to tell it what currency you want to mine. So of course, that's going to be Monero. Uh, you want to enter your username, which is just going to be the wallet address that you want to send Monero to. This doesn't have to be any kind of a special wallet. It can just be the one that you generated through your wallet app. You can also put a password to secure it if you want. Um, and then you can use the simple setup method and it's going to ask you for the pool address or the mining address for your respective pool. So you can just find that on you know whichever of these websites, F2Pool is what I'm using for this example. So this would be the mining address that you paste in to join that pool. And it'll ask you if you wanna use TLS for the connection. Um, if your pool supports it, you can do yes, but if you're unsure or if it doesn't, just pick no. Uh, and then there you go. You're all ready to start mining. It's going to automatically start and it's going to look like this. Um, and you'll probably also notice that your CPU usage goes up at this point that it starts. Uh, I've noticed by default that the miner is configured to use a pretty significant amount, uh, pretty significant portion of my CPU. 
and you can actually tweak uh, the usage. So once you run XMR stack for the first time, you're gonna get these files, config.txt, cpu.txt, and pools.txt. If you edit, or if we go into uh, cpus.txt, and it pretty much tells you how to edit it right here, um, but basically you can adjust how many cores are going to be used. So this isn't the same as threads, like I have a four core, eight thread, um, CPU so it's I currently have it bound to each one of the threads uh, and then you can adjust like how much power like what percentage of each thread is going to be used for mining XMR um, and then if you're curious uh, how much Monero you've mined so far uh, you could of course just wait until it gets deposited in your wallet uh, typically, you have to get to a certain threshold before it'll get deposited in your wallet, which is actually pretty good because, you know, there's transaction fees every single time you send a cryptocurrency. And it's not based off of the amount that's sent. It's based off of the size of the transaction. Uh, so like I've explained in other videos, it's better to just send a larger portion all at once. Um, but you can see how much has been mined for your wallet. Uh, on the pool website as well. Usually they'll have an area where you can look at this. So on f2pool.com, for example, you just want to put in the identifier for the crypto you're mining, so XMR, and then follow it by your wallet address. And then you can see all of your statistics. So it shows um, the hash rate that I've had over the past 24 hours. Um, and then it shows the estimated revenue, and I can actually refresh this to see it updated in real time. Yeah, so you can see this is how much uh, Monero my rig has mined so far. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for how to mine Monero on Linux. I hope that this video was helpful to you. Be sure to share it with others so that they can get into mining Monero, and have a great rest of your day.